You know, when you look at these 20 years, over 20 years of huge financial investment in the sector, um, and you look at, I would say, the uh, necessary ingredients, you know, for um, education to perform, you would think that they are there in Namibia with um, the qualification of primary teachers, for, in, for instance, uh, being more than in other countries. Uh, obviously, the textbooks has been an issue for some time, but it's being addressed now. So you start looking at the conditions, at the living conditions of the learners. And in a country where HIV AIDS has been high um, and still remains high, but has been very high until a couple of years ago is now around 14%, so it's still high. Obviously the number of orphans and vulnerable children is very high in society, uh, putting a lot of pressure obviously on, on the um, grandparents, on, on caregivers who end up with five, six, seven children um, that they have obviously to cater for. Um, the, the nutrition is, is an issue. Um, uh, many uh, children go to school without um, having eaten and if they do uh, benefit from the school feeding program during the week. It, many studies have been undertaken and show that the children don't eat over the weekends. Um, and obviously during the holidays it's a big issue because those children are also in a deprivation state. So we still be discussing the same issue if, if we don't start today looking at those socio-economic factors. Namibia is, might be a special case because you do have extremes in a lot of issues like HIV AIDS was, I think Namibia was ranking fifth until recently. Um, abuse on children, you know, rapes and so on. Um, domestic violence is very high and I think it's also ranking in, among the countries with the highest um, uh, levels of, of domestic violence. So if we don't address this, you know, a child who, who is going back home um, uh, being abused or uh, attending, you know, or looking at the violence in his household, um, plus the nutrition issue. If you just look at those three elements, there is very little chance for that child to perform. Having uh, an approach which is only focusing on the sector as such is, is not going to be sufficient, um, especially not in fragile states like we have in colleagues from fragile countries. Um, what we are trying to do is to see also how accountability can be supported, what we call the school governance. Because if you, your, your parents, your caregivers, your families, your community members are not aware of what education is going to bring to the children, then they will obviously not push the children for attending school. So now we are piloting social, what we call social accountability in two regions and in certain schools to see how it can make a difference by involving all the members in the community um, in, in trying to improve the service delivery by having people say whether or not the teachers are there, whether or not the, the, the kids are learning, you know, that, that this is being, uh, it's being fed back into our sector policy dialogue and in, so that government can take measures to take into account, you know, what the people think 